so we can keep, keep this. I'm going to kick it over to Anthony, who will introduce our special guest for tonight. And again, if you're coming on, please mute yourself. Uh, we will be taking questions throughout, but you know, go on mute when you're not asking a question, please. And also let us know in the chat where you're joining from. Thank you. Anthony, over to you. Brandon, uh, yes, we are very excited to introduce uh, Manju. Uh, Manju reached out to me, uh, I want to say a couple months ago, uh, actually through LinkedIn, heard about the great work that we're uh, doing here in Charlotte in our Slack community, and uh, super excited to host this event today. Uh, over the last you know, year, we've all been in some crazy times, learning new ways to work. We're in hybrid. Uh, some people are discovering new ways to work in general. Uh, Poppins sort of brings all that stuff together uh, and communication in uh, Slack. Uh, we're receiving multiple notifications uh, throughout multiple uh, applications. Things get hello hectic. And when uh, Manju actually demoed uh, Poppins for the first time, I literally was like, we have to have it. Uh, in my organization, we're actually testing it right now and getting excited to uh, fully deploy it through two workspaces. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to uh, quiet myself here and kick it over to Manju because uh, I would love him to give a demo and get things going. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, hey, everyone. Thank you. I know um, it's a bit late and I didn't know about the thunderstorm. So we hope to kind of keep it engaging so that, um, you know, it's really uh, useful for all of you. Um, yeah. Um, to begin with, again, yeah, thanks to Brandon and Anthony um, for, for organizing this and uh, inviting us. Um, and um, like what uh, Anthony said, um, you know, when when we, uh, I and my co-founder, Mayank, we, we are a remote team. Um, so what uh, we were going through uh, was, um, you know, 12 and a half hours difference. And we were literally kind of, you know, um, using Slack for most of the things. Um, and that's how the kind the, the story began. So. What I can do is I can probably start with um, a simple deck. It's not like uh, complicated. So I'm going to start with that, and um, you know maybe like we'll try to pause it. Um, Anthony, Brandon, or anyone else, you know, you guys feel free to um, you know pause me, and then we can answer questions, or we can have everything taken towards the end. Either ways work. Okay. Yeah, we'll just keep it uh, casual, like. Manji said, if you have a question in the mid, just raise your hand using the, the reactions and, uh, yeah. you know, hopefully Anthony and I'll be paying attention to that, mind you, and we'll, we'll cut in and allow yeah. that person to ask a question. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. So let me, let me start by sharing the um, deck we have for the, for the session today. Um, Can you see my screen? Yes. Um, so let's see if we can get the, I think I had the deck. Uh, just a second, let me stop the share. Let's see what happened with this. We go. Can you see my, see my screen? Yes, you're good. Okay, cool. So I'm going to start with presenting this. Okay. So um, yeah, this the slide deck is just to kind of um, you know give us a, some some sort of a structure, but feel free to you know interrupt me at any point in time um so i think the one of the fundamental changes that we are seeing and and please tell us if we are uh, uh, if we are not accurate is that uh, with work from home and hybrid what we are seeing is there is a lot of tools people are using now you know to get the work done i mean we have tools like whiteboarding tools we have um you know the zoom calls and 
the team's calls, they've just like gone through the roof um, and like the like tools that probably people were not using before just to get stuff done because you would probably just, you know, go and tap on someone's shoulder and you would probably talk and get stuff, you know, clarified. Those things are no longer happening. Um, and the, the fun part of all these tools has been that all these tools are creating like notification. They all want your attention, you know, okay. You know, maybe Brandon commented on this, Anthony did this. Okay, you know, come in here, check this out. Um, I think one of the biggest uh, not notification generator from our personal experience uh, has been Slack. I mean, it's a great tool, um, but just because, you know, all the communications kind of, you know, flow through um, Slack, um, you know, it, it is like, it's pretty obvious that, you know, we all are kind of you know, getting inundated with these notifications. Um, and what we see is if you miss, uh, I think about like seven or eight notifications uh, based on like some kind of uh, crude research, so to say, but we have some evidence to prove this as well. Um, then it's like, you just almost get into the state of, uh, you just don't care about notifications anymore. Um, the, the downside to this is people are kind of stressed out because they know a lot of the work related communication is actually happening on Slack. They're worried, oh, am I missing out on something? And that kind of, you know, brings them back into Slack or any of these tools. And it's like, you know, once you get in there, you again end up spending, you know, like tens of minutes, probably even hours just kind of you know, going through the content there. Um, and this was our personal experience as well. So what we, were, what we set out to do was uh, initially build an internal tool to just make Slack actionable so that um, when Mayank was kind of you know, writing something while I was sleeping or if I would type something while he is sleeping, um, it's not like he wakes up in the morning and spends like 45 minutes or 50 minutes just to get through all the messages or all the content that was generated while he was sleeping. So that was our goal. How do we get 45 minutes back so that we don't really have to kind of you know, scan through every message that's being um, sent our way, essentially? Okay. Um, and as part of that, um, as we kind of you know started building out stuff, um, you know we were lucky enough to be featured by um, Slack. Um, so we were uh, featured as the number one noteworthy app to begin with under productivity. Um, then that followed by being the number one brilliant bot um, again in productivity. And I think recently, probably yesterday, we got featured alongside Loom. Um, I'm, I'm almost sure most of you guys know about Loom, right? I mean, raise of hands or something like that to tell me if if not, um, I can just like spend five minutes, five seconds talking about that. Yeah, that's great. Congratulations. That's one of the, the best screen recording tools, correct? Exactly, exactly. So it's like, you know, one of the best asynchronous, you know, screen recording communication tool, you know, right? So yeah, I saw I saw a bunch of hands raised. So you guys know what it is. So it is actually like an honor and a privilege to be kind of you know uh, getting featured uh, amongst you know um, something like Loom. And even prior to that, I think we were along with some of the other you know very very well known tools. Um, we also were the product of the week um, on remote tools. So we we have been getting a lot of you know customer love and um, users love that's essentially what is kind of you not know, driving a lot of this okay um so kind of you know uh, stepping back a bit like what i was trying to tell you guys about um, us being a remote team um having this 12 and a half hour difference um so so that was essentially what triggered us to kind of you know go down this path we never thought of building a business around this. We were actually working on some other idea, I and my co-founder, Mayank. Um, but what we actually saw was, we tried like every single hack under the sun. You know, we pinned messages, we uh, added to saved items. Um, we started sending DMs to ourselves, 
you know, uh, you could you could think of any hack, like we started creating a separate channel, move stuff into that. Well, we wrote some integrations to automatically move stuff from one place to another, like another channel and stuff like that. It was just like, in spite of doing all of that, um, this problem just kept uh, compounding because we started using, you know, um, Slack more and more. Um, and then finally I had to kind of, I'm, I'm an engineer, I, I build stuff, I'm a data science guy. So one, one weekend I had to say like, okay, let's do something about this because this is just like, you know, going out of control. Um, and then I built something. I wouldn't say like that was the final version or the version that you guys see. That was more of an engineer's version just to get a hang handle on these things. Um, that's how the kind of you know, journey began. Um, we were talking to one of our, um, you know, <laughs> um, advisors, Mike, actually. Um, and it was kind of you know, funny. Um, as we were talking, um, I was actually making notes using um, Poppins. And he is like, what is that tool that you're using, you know, to make notes? I'm like, which tool? And it's like the, the thing that you're showing me on the screen. And I'm like, oh, that's that's Poppins. That's what we we just built something for our internal use. And he's like, oh, I mean, that's like awesome. I mean, of all the ideas you guys have told me, this seems like the most useful, <laughs> you know, useful of it, you know. So uh, is there a way I can play around with it? Essentially, that is how um, you know this thing started. Um and um, he he loved it, and uh, he was in um, London, Cambridge. Now he's moved to Boston. Um, he kind of literally told a couple of his friends to use it, and before we knew it, in about like five days, we had like eight teams using Poppins, like completely organically. Um, yeah, and since then it's been like uh, a juggernaut. You know, we. We kind of got listed on Slack uh, app directory. Um, you know, people are kind of you know um, using it. We have about 175 plus teams um, using it across, I would say, 50 plus countries now. Um, so very very happy. Um, yeah, obviously, you know, we want we want more users. Um, you know, more problems to be solved. So that's where we are. Um, a little bit about us, I and Mayank, we are um, we are the people on the ground doing this, but I always say like, we are not just two of us, you know, we we have a team. Um, Shrisha, he is a co-founder of Strike Deck, which got acquired by Medallia. He's been advising us, mentoring us on strategy, uh, go to market typically. Uh, Mike, as I told you guys, he's been, I know him for, like probably like 11 years now. Um, he's one of the toughest advisors, you know, you would ever get. Um, it's very hard to kind of, you know, make him happy. Well, we will love him because that is what accelerates our learning. Um, we have Sierra who is helping us with a lot of uh, UI and UX, okay. Um, with that, I think it is probably time to get into a demo. We also have a, um, a video recording um, that we uh, uploaded for YC because we are applying for Y Combinator as well. Um, but what I will probably do, you know, right now is maybe just kind of you know, take you guys through a real flow. Um, but before that, if you guys have any questions till this point in time, I would just like pause and, you know, uh, let me know. Yeah, if anybody has a question, otherwise, this is great. I think this is what we came for. So, Manju, take it away. Give us a sense of how Poppins works. Oh, awesome. So, let's kind of, you know, uh, go back um, into, the, into the demo part. Okay. So, this is one of our uh, test lab workspace. Um, so, initially, we started with, you know, founders because um, as I told you, um, we kind of you know, gave this app to Mike and then he gave it to people that he, he was advising and that's literally how it kind of you know, started. 
Um, but now, you know, we have product people, project managers, um, we have IT administrators. This is another thing that we are seeing. A lot of these people, uh, community managers, that's another new thing. We are learning a bit about some of these things as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is probably walk you guys through like, um, a, you know, a day in the life of maybe a product manager, so to say, um, because that's something that we have observed um, closely a lot more. So typically um, what happens is when you use Slack, you have a lot of channels, you probably um, star a few of these channels. So what we have seen is um, any team which has more than about six people, um, you tend to have at least about 19 channels. Okay, our math may be off a bit, but there's about like 19 channels and um, people can't consume that much content. So they end up starring at least five to six channels. So that's the other thing that we are seeing, okay? So you would typically see like, you know, under start, you will probably have like five or six channels. Um, and, um, and all of those will have a ton of notifications. So um, essentially the workflow of a product manager before using pop-ins, and this could be applicable for anybody. I'm just taking the example of a product manager, okay? It's not necessarily that it has to be a product manager, okay? It could be your workflow too, because this is how our workflow was, you know? So you come in probably um, in, in the morning or probably in the night, you know, before you kind of, you know, sleep. Um, and then you start going through all your start channels, the messages that are in those start channels, okay, just to get a hang of what's kind of going on. Um, you, you, if you're lucky, it might not be too much, but typically, you know, what we have seen is even with like a team of six, seven people, it, it just like, you know, it's like a fire hose. It just keeps going up and like up and up. So typically what people do is they kind of, you know, scroll through stuff, um, and then they try to kind of, you know, say, oh, okay, this is something that I want to do something about. So typically you may end up clipping this and say, okay, let me add this to um, a saved item. So this is the normal flow that we follow and mostly, or, or you probably would pin it, you know, one of those things. Um, and then let's say you do this, you kind of you know, scan through, maybe you collect like five, 10 of these items um, and then at some point in time during the day, you come back and say like, okay, let me look at my things that I've saved. And then probably you're going to do something about this and then say, okay, this is done. Let me kind of, you know, say this is done. Okay. Now, what we have seen and what we have heard is this small workflow that I just showed you guys itself is unbelievably hard to track. And what I mean by that is once you mark something as done, finding that message or finding that thing that you did is like, you know, you'll have to really be like a Sherlock Holmes trying to find where is this message, okay? Because it's like lost in this fire hose, okay? So what, what Poppins does is instead of you know you clicking on add to saved items you could just instead click on um, these three dots and then add it as an action item or a discussion topic or as a highlight now why we have those three categories and stuff like that i'll spend time later but it doesn't really um, make much of a difference because you can interchange these categories even later okay so let's say this is something that I want to add it as an action item for myself, okay? So I just click on this and then I get an option saying that, okay, is this an action item only for you or um, like anybody in this channel can kind of, you know, look into this, right? Um, and you could say, look, this is only for me, then just leave it as private, but you can also say, okay, no, this is anybody in the channel can look at this, okay, um, right? So you are that way you are helping the community in a way, right? I mean, you're helping everybody that way. They don't really have to, not each of you have to go, go through every message and spend 45 minutes each. You know, now instead you are like looking at only those things which have been marked so that, you know, you, you all of us can save time essentially, right? 
Um, and then you can add tags. Again, a lot of these features are like customer, like user requested features. So you could add tags as like, you know, let's say I'm doing this, um, it's a Slack community event, okay? And then you can mark it as events and a demo. And then you kind of, you know, click submit. Um, now what happens is this is like a shared to-do list because I chose channel. This is like a shared to-do list. Everybody in this channel can now see this uh, item, you know, and and there are more advanced features where you can say, okay, this has to be uh, the, the owner of this is let's say Mayank and stuff, but you know, that doesn't mean that only Mayank can see it. Anybody can see it and anybody can work on it. So the way we do that is by uh, just typing pop-ins, okay, slash command pop-ins. And um, if you don't know slash commands, again, I'm happy to do it maybe slightly later. Um, but yeah, it's a standard thing, do slash pop-ins. And then we have this thing, what we call a control center. You can look up My Digest. My Digest will give you all the stuff um, that you own or you created essentially, you know. Um, but right now what I'm going to show is the channel digest because we created one of those items as a channel item. So essentially this is what it is. You know, I think we clipped some content and it's saying it's, it can't be displayed, but anything that you clip, you get it here. And um, you could mark this as done. Um, but the fact that this is here with the link to details itself makes it like super, super useful. That's what we have heard from like so many people because um, you can go further back, like, you know, you can go all the way back to May 29th, okay? Um, and imagine this is like a, a very heavily used channel, that would mean like there are probably like thousands and thousands of messages, you know, between now and May 29th. Just finding this is, a, is going to be like a, a Herculean task. Instead, what you can do now is you can just click on details and automatically pop-ins will help you know, scroll the content and actually take you to that exact message. Okay, and this solves that problem of you kind of, you know, bookmark and like, you know, unbookmark and you suddenly kind of, you know, you have lost it. That doesn't kind of, you know, happen here. Um, and there are a bunch of other cool things that you can do um, while you are there. Um, you could probably say like, okay, hey, I'm kind of, you know, looking into this. That way uh, others kind of you know, get to know, you can say like, hey, I'm, I'm looking into this mark in progress. Um, that way kind of you know, people um, get to know, okay, you're kind of you know, looking into this. Um, and you can say like, okay, um, I wanna make changes. Let's say I want to have, um, I mean, I can't show Anthony and Brandon, but like, you know, if you have people, you can say, I, I want to add them as collaborator. I think in this case, what I'm going to do is probably I'll just add Mayank as a collaborator. So essentially what will happen with this is um, he'll get notified saying that, hey, you, you have been added as a collaborator to this particular thing, this particular item. And then, you know, you guys can um, work on that together. Um, and yeah, when, when it is done, you can just mark it as done. This is like lightweight shared um, to do kind of, you know, management. This is not like, we are not um, thinking of this being like a, a replacement for any of your big um, project management tools, but these are, uh, this is something where you have messages and stuff like that, that you actually just wanted to, you know, um, act on, so to say that, you know, and, and instead of, you know, your typical bookmark kind of a thing, you know, um, you have a, a better way of doing this. And I'll show you why it is better other than just the details part as well, okay? Um, and then, yeah, I mean, all these tags that we created, they are all useful now, okay? We can now go and pull um, these things and say like, okay, I just wanna see all the things which have been marked as discussed, or um, let's say clear this tag, and whatever you guys have created, it depends on whatever you have, like customer one, okay, let's go and see, okay, whatever we have, some some kind of you know, basic filtering on those things. Um, the second way of using pop-ins is let's say we are on a call like this, okay? Um, and while you're talking, you want to kind of make a note of an action item. So you can do that too. You can just click on add new right there and say like, this is an action item, okay? 
um, and just say like during the Slack community event, okay? And then just say add, okay? Now this is added to the same kind of you know, digest for this channel. Um, and from there on, it's the same process. So irrespective of whether you got this message by clipping an existing message, or you created one while you are on a call or anything, the workflow from there on is the same. You know, um, you can just essentially do the same thing. You know, Mark has done and stuff like that. Um, the other interesting thing that um, we do is once you have done something, you can just go to pop-ins um, and what we call a dunce report. We have a dunce report. You can click on this. And it will show you what are the things that were done this week, okay? And then you can go to last week as well and say, okay, what was the thing that was done last week? And then two weeks before that, okay? So we have more, right? Um, so this is, again, this is where people start loving pop-ins because these were messages that they would have never figured out, you know, if they had just bookmarked it and, you know, unbookmarked it later, you know? So, so this is one cool thing. Um, there's another thing, once you become like a power user of using pop-ins, some of these things, okay. So this, is, this used to be like our workflow before, you know, scrolling through. Um, so what people do is they start um, not clipping, they start composing. So in, instead of, you know, sending just a message to Anthony at the rate of Anthony, the way the message is sent is more like, hey, my aunt, I mean, yeah, my uh, this is typically my um, can we do this uh, by end of day today? Okay. Earlier, people would just do this. Okay. Now, what people are doing is they'll just say at the rate pop ins. Okay. And if it is an action item or something, they're putting a tag as ACT. If it's a discussion, hash discuss. We are actually, you know, putting some machine learning into it so that you don't even have to explicitly add hash ACT or any of that. We will, you know, figure it out and then we will ask for confirmation as well. Uh, but we don't want to, uh, like, you know, going back to our first principles, we don't want to create more noise. That's why, you know, we are beginning with asking you guys to put hash ACT because you know best and then based on what you are tagging as an action item, the system learns. And then once it becomes intelligent enough, then you know we'll start you know figuring things out even without mentioning. Okay. Um, but this is this is where typically our power users end up being, you know. So once this is done, it gets captured. Again, same flow from there on. So essentially you have three ways of you know um, capturing any of these things as an action item. One is by clipping using those three dots. Um, the second one is, you know, adding um, something right here, you know, or the third one is while you're composing, just mention at the rate of pop-ins and, um, you know, you can add hash ACT and then, you know, you have it, okay? Um, and by the way, um, this is something that we do with a lot of our, almost all of our users. If any of you um, want to play around, want to get onboarded, that's essentially what we say, right? We are more than happy. I or my aunt, we will personally onboard you, okay? So um, feel free to um, drop in a line. If any of you are uh, signing up at this point in time, we will get those notifications. We will try to connect with you on LinkedIn and also on email. Um, more than happy to you know, onboard you guys and um, and really understand um, the problem you guys are trying to solve and uh, make improvements in the product as well, because it's not like Poppins is like fully done. Like, you know, um, we are very early in our journey. So we, we typically kind of, you know, um, up, keep updating um, based on the feedback that you know, we get, okay. Um, so there is one more power feature that I'm going to show and then I'm going to pause because I think we have covered a lot. Um, and this is super helpful for community managers or people who are um, in multiple workspaces, okay? Because instead of like switching your workspace and you know trying to figure out what is kind of going on, 
what we built was we built what we call a cross workspace feature. Um, so what this does is um, we use your um, email as a as an anchor. And when I say email, uh, we don't get to ever see any of that. It is mostly the hash of the email so that, you know, okay, we know it is the same identity that is kind of you know, pre present in two different workspaces. And then we pull all of those things together. So for example, I think um, these were people that probably Mayank onboarded um, during India time. So we kind of you know, mark all of these as action um, you know, items as well for ourselves. But yeah, you know, so you kind of get this from our main workspace and this is coming from this workspace. So essentially you are, you have stuff um, coming from multiple of these workspaces. So if you are, if you have used an email and if you have kind of connected that with six workspaces, you will have content coming in from all those six workspaces. Um, if Poppins is installed in those six workspaces. Okay, so that's, that's another, um, and you can do a bunch of things, not everything here, like for example, we, we may not be able to assign it to people, but you can still mark it as done, mark it as in progress. Uh, but you know the details in the details section, you may not be able to choose people and maybe channels and stuff like that. So that's just because uh, now you're going um, cross workspace and stuff like that. Okay. So with with that, I'm going to pause and um, would love to open up for questions, discussions, um, anything. Yeah, if you have a question, please just come off mute. I have a, uh, I'll go on and jump in with a question. The use case you were just showing with the multiple cross channels, how do you know which channel when they all compile into that one window? Is there a notif or is there a way to yeah. look and see which where the yeah, messages we, came from we do show we do show that's a good question we do show um you know we can certainly probably you know improve make it more explicit but you see this one is coming from poppins okay um and when you don't really have anything specified it is from the current workspace okay so if you have um, I, I don't know if I have anything from on deck. If I had one from on deck, you might see that as well. I'm not too sure. Yeah. Got it. Thank uh, you. Yeah. But there is, there is, we do specify, okay, this is coming from, um, you know, um, this workspace also. Yeah. I had, an, I had another question and, and that is regarding the, the different digests. Um, yeah. You said all the, examples you were showing before you were you were on that figuring it out or figuring out yeah. you know channel yeah uh do you have to go to each channel and pull the digest or is there uh you know a sort of a cross yeah. community poppins digest yeah absolutely again that's a great question so what we have is you know you can pull up poppins again and we have what we call a workspace digest Okay, this gives you um, a complete, um, you know, overview of uh, everything that is going in the current workspace. Okay, uh, but this is only working on public information, so public channels and public stuff. If you have saved something for yourself as private, okay, or part of DM or something like that, or a private group, those things will never show up here, but um if you um you know if there is public stuff then yes it it appears and you can filter it by channel you don't really have to go through each channel so you can filter it if there is a channel with no action items or anything then you will not see them here and then you know you can um again you know you can filter it by tags as well across the entire workspace yeah um so very very good very good question very useful that's, that's the thing that, you know, especially with people who live in multiple channels or like, you know, who are managing multiple products or projects and stuff like that, um, this is very, very helpful, yeah.
So mind you, out of the, I believe you, you mentioned earlier, uh, you've onboarded now mm -hmm. uh, well over a hundred uh, new customers, which is awesome to hear. Uh, yeah. What are some of the, the, the big wow moments that when you're onboarding uh, your next customer, uh, like that people normally get really excited about when you, when you showcase a specific feature? Um, I think it's been both ways. I mean, we have, we have felt like wow, and they have felt wow as well. I mean, um, but, but many times it's like, we are feeling wow then, you know, them, because it looks very natural to them. It's almost like, you know, they have needed something like this for, for eternity. It's like very natural. Uh, but I think what is very interesting is when we see them use pop-ins, like for example, um, one of our very, very early customers was, you know, uh, an engineering manager. He had like 13 direct reports and he, he was kind of, you know, working with four other stakeholders, his manager and three other people. Um, I don't know about how uh, the rest of the people on this call manage this, but in his organization, he was keeping a Google doc for each of the weekly meetings, his one-on-ones. Okay. So essentially he was like managing 13 Google Docs and he had a 14th Google Doc with an index to all these 13. Okay, <laughs> that was like the, the fun part. Um, and then uh, what he showed us was he actually stopped using that. And like, we were curious, like, like how, okay. And then what he showed us was like, he literally went into each of these um, DMs and then he would go ahead and he would create um, like, you know, action items right here. So essentially, let's say uh, I am talking to you, let's say Anthony or Brandon, you know, while we are doing our one-on-ones, he would just go in here and he would just add an action item right there. Okay. Or if there's something that they had to discuss like a week later, he would just write an action uh, a discussion item or something right there. So the funny thing is like, that's how he started, but like all his reports and everybody, they started putting all these highlights saying like, hey, this is the work that we did from last week. Okay, so that that was something we had never thought of as a use case, you know, that kind of you know, blew our mind. Um, the second use case was um, with shared channels. This is another new learning for us, you know, because now people are using shared channels um, now they are using that for customer support. So a lot of the, um, you know, uh, small companies in Southeast Asia, particularly, what they are doing is they're inviting their customers um, to be on these shared channels as a customer support channel. So instead of investing in, you know, one more um, in-app kind of a chat mechanism and all of that, they're essentially like, you know, growing their community and they're saying, please join us here. And if you have anything, you know, you just ask us right here in the channel and then you know, we'll respond. Um, and that's been like a big use case for us because what we see now is, um, you know, the, the customer, so to say, they can actually do all the chatting they want to do. And then they will just tag like probably towards the end saying, okay, this is an action item that I want you guys to kind of, you know, do and stuff like that. Okay. Or, or the customer service representative, they will just say, okay, this is an action item that we will get back to you with or something like that. Okay. Pretty, pretty powerful. And it's like, for us, it's like a wow thing, you know, like, I mean, we weren't really expecting some of these things and yeah, I mean, there's, there's some more examples like that with outsourcing, especially with design. People are on Figma and stuff like that, you know, so that's another use case, very similar. Or if you have outsourced engineering, you know, so we have, we have people in Paraguay and people in Philippines, you know, they are kind of using this and, and even there because of, um, you know, using Slack as a communication channel with shared channels, you know, yeah. So very interesting. I mean, I can go on, but you know, those were like very interesting for us, you know, um, but for them, it's like they, they just love hashtags. They just love the fact that they can pull this up, um, you know, at any point in time. By the way, one other thing that I forgot to show you guys is you can just go to Poppins. This is another thing people love. They just, you know, go to home and you get to see all your action items, 
in one place. Okay. So most people, their workflow has changed where they just come here, click on this, they just see, and they kind of know, okay, I mean, this is essentially what has happened, or this is what is important to me, so to say, you know. Um, so yeah. Do you, how long do those action items stay uh, listed there? Is there a date range? Um, we, we are not enforcing anything at this point in time. But generally what we are seeing is our users don't keep uh, most of these things for more than a week. They're typically like very short lived kind of things. Um, and then we are trying to figure out the trail. So after that, where does this thing go? So, um, so what we are seeing is there's about like 85, 90% of them, they're not really going anywhere. So essentially it was something that you wanted to do, you kind of you know, captured it, you finished it, you're done, marked with it, you know? But then there are a small percentage of them, which actually makes it to what I call a system of record, like probably one of your bigger project management tool or somewhere else it kind of you know, goes in because probably that's a bigger kind of you know, thing that, like, and the typical thing that we see is discussion items. So something gets marked, flagged as a discussion item, but after the discussion, you know, it kind of you know, blows up into a bunch of things, okay? And those things kind of you know, end, end up going into, if you are an engineering or maybe it goes into Jira. If you are like marketing, we have seen people take that into Asana and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, short lived, typically short lived about a week. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I love the fact that when uh, we had our onboarding conversation, uh, mentioned that you're still learning from customers and you know gathering feedback to continue improving Poppin. So that was that was good, and having the personal attention was even better. No, absolutely, we do that with pretty much everybody. Anyone who responds to us on LinkedIn or email, I mean, we, we are there. We are there to help them um, because, like as you guys are seeing, I think uh, the initial version. Um, what we built and what we are seeing now, there's like, there's like a, not just a daylight difference, there's like a massive difference, you know? Um, so a lot of that is purely just coming from user feedback. So, so for example, we have more feedback saying that, okay, look, you have 41 items. I know for a fact, I can't, you know, like knock off all the 40, 41 of them here. Is there a way you can help us schedule a few of them, like prioritize? Like, I mean, people are giving us ideas saying that, okay, look, I mean, you know for a fact that I am working with Brandon um, and Anthony, you know, mostly, right? So maybe, you know, uh, those are like my like core team. So maybe like, is there a way you can prioritize that, you know, slightly higher? Or in cases of project managers, the, the priority is the other way around, where they want to actually uh, be on top of, external communication essentially with stakeholder communication. So they are like, hey, when something is not in my team, I want that to be like a priority, you know, show that as a priority. Um, and then once that is done, they want to kind of you know, get that scheduled, saying that, okay, can, can we just pick five of these things and get it done today? So there's some interesting, um, you know, ideas and requests that's kind of you know, coming their way. Um, and we will be kind of you know, doing that. Um, there is a lot more actually this is just not a slack app we actually have built um, um, a browser extension as well this is not public yet but the idea is you know um, even if you're on a google meet call you should be able to capture your action items and get those action items into slack essentially you know that's the whole view so that you don't feel like this, the disjointed silos of information. Let's say you're on a Zoom call like this, you're making action like nodes. You want to get that back into probably, you know, um, the, the Slack, you know, workspace so that there's like one place that you can go and you can kind of, you know, see. And that is not a, another tool we are asking you to install. It's one of the tools you're already using. Like, like uh, the designers want all their, action items to appear in Figma. And the reason I'm telling that is like, my co-founder is a designer, you know, he lives in Figma, right? Um, the engineers want everything to appear in their um, IDEs, coding IDEs, okay? So we have all these requests saying that, 
hey, is there a way you guys can interact, you know, integrate these things so that I can just pull this up in my Visual Studio or like, you know, some, any of my editor essentially, right? Um, so yeah, we, we are kind of you know, looking at some of those things. So we started it as a Slack app, but I think uh, the vision is like much bigger in, you know, in, instead it's going to be like across a lot of these apps so that um, we can kind of you know, cut down these silos and bring everything together wherever you want it to be. I think that's the key here. You know, it's not like we will ask you to install Poppins as another web app or something like, you know, jump out of Slack, do something, or it'll be like, you know, um, you know, anything that you can kind of do. And we will try to make it all fully interoperable. What you see in Slack is something that you, if you want to pull up in Figma, you'll see that. You'll see that same thing on your code editor. You'll see the same thing maybe on your IT dashboard, if you will, if you want on service now or something like that. So, so that, that's, a, that's the whole idea. So that uh, at no point in time, you feel like, um, you know, you need to, you need to, these are like silos and you need to do something to get them together essentially, you know, so. Thank you, Manju. Uh, yeah. Love to open it up uh, either questions through chat or if anybody feels comfortable to come off a of mute and ask uh, one of us a question, love to take this time to uh, open the floor. Sure. Um, so is there a way I, I mean, should I go through this or like, is there, is there anyone who has a question happy to, you know, yeah. I didn't see any questions come in through chat uh, or uh, direct messages. I had a couple of people direct message me. What about you, Brandon? Uh, no, same. I have not seen. So feel free to just jump off of uh, mute. You know, I did want to ask Wanju for anybody that's on here, if you could yeah. just quickly tell us what is what has it been like developing this app for Slack? Have you in, interacted with anybody on the development team at Slack and how have they inter engaged with you? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we we have been lucky. We did interact with, um, you know, a couple of folks on the um, development team. Um, we have interacted a lot with the Slack app directory team, you know, um, and they have been like super helpful. And I mean, I, I tell this to everybody that um, although they say they take about four weeks to approve, um, they usually, I mean, at least in our case, they did that in 10 days, okay? And um, and the kind of support is what like, is, is like aspirational, is something that we want to also offer to our customers, you know? Typically, you know, when you have a big company like Slack, you know, what happens is um, you kind of lose touch with your customers in a way, you know, it's like, okay, there's an issue, and then you start getting these canned answers back saying that, okay, you know, here is the documentation, here is this thing, you know, go figure it out kind of a thing. Or, you know, they'll ask you like, hey, can you give me this logs? Can you give me like, you know, much, much more information? And can you tell me steps to reproduce this? You know, what not, right? But in our experience, this is, this is, this is why I keep telling Mayank as well that Slack is, is a, a very good example for us to follow because when we have worked with uh, either the dev team or the app directory team, um, very rarely I have seen them ask, um, hey, tell me the steps to reproduce it. Very rare. In fact, many a times we are actually given steps saying that, okay, look, this is the steps that we did. And that's when this kind of you know, happened. Okay, can you kind of you know, look at this? Okay. and. When a customer reports an issue, when we actually you know, go to their support team, um, they are able to actually pull up the logs and they are actually tell you that, hey, this is what is kind of going on. And, and a classic example of this is how we went from not being an enterprise ready app to an enterprise ready app in 36 hours, okay? So we, wow. we, didn't, even, <laughs> we didn't even know we were not, okay? And then, um, we were told that you are not ready. And uh, I'm like, 
okay, tell me what do we have to do to be ready? And then um, he pointed like, you know, Marcelo pointed me to a documentation and he said, look, I mean, we give this documentation to everybody, but they typically take about 15 days to digest this documentation. Okay. Wow. So, um, and then I asked him, so, so what's the cheat sheet? You know, how can I make this fast? Because I can't do this for like, you know, 15 days. Um, so then he said, okay, the fastest way is for you to build, go through this as quickly as you can build, and then I'm going to test it. And wherever I find issues, I'm going to let you know, that's like the fastest way for you to kind of, you know, build this. Hmm. Um, he is in Australia, so we have like even more time zone difference, uh, but he helped us about like for about two, two and a half hours on Friday afternoon, okay? And then he said like, look, I mean, I want this to be enabled by Monday morning my time, that is like Sunday afternoon our time in Pacific. Um, otherwise I'll have to kind of, you know, take it down from a featured, you know, thing because you're not enterprise kind of, you know, ready. Uh, I mean, like I and Mank, we literally kind of did like a marathon, 36 hour kind of, you know, session. Hackathon, but, yeah. Yeah, hackathon. That's, I mean, like, but I think more than us, what was really, really helpful was those two hours initially, you know, how Marcelo kind of you know, got us started. Because it was very easy for him. He could have just said like, okay, here is a documentation, just go figure it out, you know, right? Sure. But he didn't, he didn't do that. He kind of you know, helped us, you know, get jump started. And then when he came back on Monday morning, he uh, he asked us, are you guys ready? We said, yes. He didn't really ask us like, have you done these 500 tests? Have you done all of these things? Give me a checklist, show me these things are done and all of that. But then he went in and he kind of you know, tested himself. Like, in, I think he, he told us about a couple of issues, but like 98% of the time it was kind of you know, working. So I feel I have personally not seen that level of support um, with an enterprise kind of in a company at that scale, you know, at the scale um, Slack is operating. So, um, yeah, and I'm not saying this just because, uh, you know, there might be somebody on the call uh, from Slack, but I'm just saying this purely out of what we have experienced, you know, it's, it's, and we keep telling ourselves, we keep reminding ourselves that that is what we want to um, be, you know, even when we kind of you know, be really large and big, we still want to kind of, you know, be uh, talking to people like they're humans, you know, get them, help them out, get them kind of you know, going rather than uh, the standard stuff that, you know, people are generally used to, you know, which is, sure. which is a bit, st bit sad actually, but yeah. Yeah, that's a great story. And I appreciate you ending with that because um, I think Anthony and I can both attest that the Slack community itself is just incredibly welcoming and opening. So any of you who are on this call who just joined for this session, you know, feel free to look at joining our Charlotte chapter, get to slackcommunity.com slash Charlotte, especially for you North Carolinians. I don't think there's another chapter in the state right now, but uh, it's free and you'll get in and there's just incredible resources, uh, whether you're a developer or just an admin or whatever. And uh, and also when we can get back out and actually do real meetups again, Slack is really generous with with swag items and, and things like that. So uh, hopefully one of these days we'll do regular meetups back in Charlotte or, or somewhere close by. But we really want to thank you, Manju, for taking the time out. And Anthony, thanks, thanks for uh, teeing it up with Manju. Uh, having this discussion and and for all of you who joined this evening as well appreciate it we'll send out a recorded link after the fact um, just give me a little bit of time for the recording to settle in and so forth if there aren't any more questions or if there are please you know take a second to raise your hand or come off mute otherwise again from me and Anthony, thank you so much and Manju uh, congratulations on the success so far and just for being you know, willing to personally onboard your customers and try to stay close to them. You know, that's really admirable. Absolutely. And I'm telling everybody who's on this call, I mean, like, you know, if you, if you guys just respond um, to our email or like just ping us, you know, uh, you can ping us on Twitter, LinkedIn, where, anywhere we will, we will respond, you know, and, and and we're using this 12 and a half hour difference between me and my aunt, the time zone to our advantage. So one of us are like always up. 
So, you know, one of us will definitely kind of, you know, respond back, you know. So, Excellent. Yeah. yeah, we wish we could have my Maya on here as well today, but um, Edwin and, and Amber and several people, Shridi, are, are all thanking you in chat as well. So yep. again, congratulations and uh, thanks so much for all your insights and good luck. Look forward to seeing where Poppins continues to grow. Oh, awesome. Thanks. Thanks again. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank okay. you. Sure. Bye.